One of the most common mistakes in PCB design is introducing breaks in the ground plane underneath signal carrying traces. While that might sound harmless, such interruptions can quickly turn traces into unwanted antennas. This doesn't just lead to unintended high frequency radiation, it also makes the circuit more sensitive to external interference. To demonstrate this effect in practice, a simple test board was designed. It features two identical traces, each equipped with a UFL compatible UMRF connector for the test signal, and two parallel 100 ohm SMD resistors serving as 50 ohm terminations. Beneath one of the traces, a large gap in the ground plane was deliberately introduced. Since PCBWay currently offers the purple solder mask at no extra cost, this option was naturally chosen. And the result speaks for itself. Assembly is very straightforward. The two UMRF connectors and the four SMD resistors can easily be soldered by hand. For the test setup, two short UMRF to SMA coaxial cables are used. The signal source is a TechBox TBCG4 comb generator. Its broadband output signal is evenly distributed to both traces via a resistive power divider. For the measurement, a TechBox H10 near field probe is used, which detects magnetic fields and is connected directly to the input of the Rigel RSA5065. N spectrum analyzer. When probing the traces alternately, a significantly higher level is observed on the trace above the ground gap. At the marked location, the level difference is about 4 decibels. To ensure the difference isn't caused by component tolerances or other effects, the ground plane is repaired for a second measurement. A small piece of copper tape is placed over the gap. The new measurement now shows almost identical levels. A clear indication that the break in the ground plane was responsible for the increased radiation. But that's not all. The broken ground plane also worsens crosstalk, that is, the mutual interference between parallel traces. To demonstrate this, the test setup is modified to allow an S21 measurement between the traces using the network analyzer function of the RSA 5065N. S21, the so-called forward transmission coefficient shows how much signal power is transmitted from the input to the output of a network. The lower trace is connected to port 1 of the RSA 5065N, the upper one via a 20 dB preamplifier to port 2. The amplifier is needed because the coupling between the traces is very low. First, an S21 measurement is taken with the copper tape covering the ground gap and normalized as a reference, so the display is relative to this baseline. Then the copper tape is removed to make the deviation visible. After removing the tape, the coupling increases by more than 10 decibels in some places. To rule out the possibility that movement of the board or changes in the test setup are affecting the result, a cross check is done. The copper tape tape is placed back in its original position and the measurement repeated. And lo and behold, the original result is restored, so it's clearly due to the ground plane. What the to analyze the root cause more closely, a trace on a broken ground plane was modeled in CST Studio and the resulting fields were simulated. The observed effect can be explained by the behavior of the return current path. With alternating current, the return currents tend to follow the path of least impedance, which at high frequencies lies directly under the signal trace. A break in the ground forces the return current to take a more distant path. This increases the loop area between the forward and return currents, significantly boosting electromagnetic radiation. With a bit of bad luck, the signal frequency might even match the resonance frequency of the gap. In that case, nearly all the signal energy gets radiated instead of forwarded. In the simulated setup, however, this effect only occurs at a frequency of 8.857 GHz, which isn't relevant for the actual test. Still, it deserves mention 
and for completeness. This effect is reciprocal. The trace with the faulty ground plane not only radiates more, it also becomes more susceptible to external interference. This means noise signals can couple in more easily and cause problems in the circuit. That too is easy to show. The comb generator is connected via a 4 decibel attenuator to the near field probe, which now acts as a signal source for a broadband interference field. The lower trace is connected to the input of the spectrum analyzer. The measured levels with and without a continuous ground plane are compared. It becomes clear that comb peaks are visible from greater distance in the spectrum when the ground plane is interrupted. At equal distances, the measured levels are significantly higher with a broken ground plane. These experiments make one thing clear. Breaks in the ground plane lead to stronger high frequency radiation, increased susceptibility to interference and worse crosstalk. They highlight how essential a continuous ground plane under signal carrying traces is for low noise PCB design.